quick election update. Trump is going to lose Georgia. <laughs> Trump is going to lose Pennsylvania. <laughs> Trump, I'm sorry, just Trump lost. And I know a lot of people are sour and sore over that. And the excuses are coming out. And this is what this video is going to be about because... A lot of the complaining and the fraud claims are coming out of the whole absentee ballot process. Now, I come to you because you may be like, well, who are you to lecture us on anything? Well, well, for once, I actually have something to stand on here. I was an absentee ballot director for the state of New Mexico. Um, I feel I did a pretty good job. Well, I did a good enough job that there's a number of news articles I was in that are behind me. But anyways, that aside, that flexing aside... I would think I know a little bit about the logistics of the program since I literally was the director of the end-to-end -end logistics for an entire election for an entire state. Now, people are going to be like, well, you're just the absentee ballot director of New Mexico. That's such a small-time state, you know, it's probably, you know, run half ass compared to other states. And okay, let's go with that because what I want to do is I want to explain – the entire process and how much oversight there is, how much rigmarole there is in just a state like New Mexico. Because I can bet you, I can bet you states like Pennsylvania, New York, Texas, California probably have much more stringent systems than New Mexico. So with me explaining how things happen in the state of New Mexico from end to end as far as absentee ballots go... It's going to show that fraud is a lot harder to pull off in some other states, I would think. But that's for you to decide. Anyways, here's how the absentee ballot process works in a state like New Mexico. All right. Absentee ballot requests come in. I was obviously the main person that would get those ballot requests. All right. Me and a representative from an accounting firm that had no political affiliation, did no sort of funding to any party or anything like that, would meet at a post office where the absentee ballot requests are sent into a post office box that I would get, get every single morning along with that representative from the accounting firm. And any given day of the week, depending on what day of the week it was, a representative from the candidates would be there. All right. So it might be, you know, John Kerry's guy with me one day or the George Bush guy with me the other day, whatever. It just depends on wh whatever. We gave fair opportunity and so much oversight to see things. They would oversee myself getting the ballot requests, note how many there were, transmit them, tr excuse me, transfer them over to the accounting office where every single one was given an individual barcode that was scanned into a computer system and they were allocated into three piles. Those three piles were districts that are garnered for voting, which was Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and the rest of New Mexico. Because Albuquerque and Santa Fe are like 85% of the entire population of the state of New Mexico. So anyways, those three areas were, were, were where the piles were set in and they would be put on lock and key, okay? The numbers of everything that were scanned in of who, who voted, or excuse me, who sent a request from what area were given over to all the party's people. I would put together a report every single night that was emailed. These number of people came in for requests. It doesn't tell you exactly who because there is an amount of privacy, but it would say these number of people came in in these areas and they requested for ballots. It's obviously, it's not going to say like, you know, this is a registered Republican, this is a registered Democrat, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. That's a little too much information that doesn't even need to be given out. So that's all given. Those people can feel like, okay, well, our district, there's a number of, of votes, excuse me, of requests for ballots that came in heavily in this area in like Santa Fe compared to Albuquerque. So let's, um, you know, put more people and put more advertising out in, in Santa Fe versus Albuquerque or just anything like that. So, you know, the, the, the parties did whatever they did with those numbers. Now, ballots themselves were sent out to obviously the people that requested them. These ballots were held under lock and key. The only people that could possibly have got them were the ones that requested them. The absolute count of them, of the number distributed, had to match 
the number of requests that came in. So in order to get the ballot, you'd have to have the same number of people that requested them. So if election was to come and go, and then there was all of a sudden 10,000 more votes than ballots that were requested, that would be a huge, obvious, and immediate red flag. So the number of requests that came in is completely overseen by me, an independent observer from the accounting firm we had, and the individuals from the party's representatives. That part is overseen. So thinking that like ballots could just be like, you know, like, okay, just say like I was corrupt. I just said like, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm going to hand, um, whatever, John Kerry's people a box of ballots. And I'm going to be like, you know, just fill them out and just mail them back in. It's okay. Go ahead and do that. Like that would be busted so simply and easily. And I could tell you every single state in the country has at least that minimum requirement where you have to report the number of requests for ballots. So that way you can at least match that against what the actual ballot count is for your state. And if it is significantly higher, it shows that, oh boy, ballots were filled out. How did that happen? Now, once ballots are sent in, they are sent. They were sent into a bill. We had we 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 got a building for the day where cell phones were taken away. Even me, as the director of the whole operations, I didn't even have a cell phone on me that day. I know. How did I not commit suicide going a whole day without a cell phone? You, should, you tell me. Anyways, um, this is and, and this is this is after the, the the Gore Bush election. So like like a lot of people are like you know honed in on conspiracies and fraudulent things happening. So everyone wanted to, you know, pull up their pants as tight as possible, high as possible, and be ready not to screw up. Me being one of them as well. So the entire process of the ballots coming in, in New Mexico, the ballots were opening, opened the day of the election. Okay. They get, they start to get open. I know some, some states, the ballots aren't open until the, the polls close. Whatever, New Mexico, they open the day that, the, the second that people were started voting in the state of New Mexico, we open the ballots. Okay. The ballots can be flagged for any number of reasons. In New Mexico, it was such that, you know, it's such a small state. We just had a staff of people. We didn't have to use machines. We used human judgment. So if there was something like, it looks kind of like two boxes were marked, you know, it gets sent over to a table with judges. These judges were selected by both parties' individuals. On top of that, there are overseeing individuals that were selected by both parties as well. I can tell you with certainty that every state at least has that type of oversight. So this whole thing that Republicans want to get oversight in the in Pennsylvania election, stuff like that, like, no, there's already people overseeing. There's already people that are affiliated to either party overseeing the process. It's just that, you know, you don't need more cooks in the kitchen at this point. Right now, it is so overwhelmed. Why do you want to throw more people on one side of the party in to the kitchen right now? Like I said, there's enough cooks in the kitchen. Sit back, let the process carry out, and then we'll see if things look fraudulent once it's done. Because that's the thing. Like the whole thing of stop the count. Well, no, you want the count to continue because one of the easiest ways to, to prove fraud is if the total number looks fraudulent. Like, that's the thing. It's the, one of the easiest ways to catch fraud is if that number is so much higher than the number of ballots requested. I just, I, God. So anyways, back to New Mexico, okay? I'm overseeing the operation. I can tell you with certainty, by the end of the night, every single trash bag was examined. Every single bathroom was examined. Every single nook and cranny that possibly things could be done away with. But that's the thing is once ballots were brought in, they didn't leave the rooms where they were counted out. No one took or removed anything ballot wise from those rooms. And like I said, New Mexico, there was three districts that we set up, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and the rest of New Mexico. Okay. So there was three separate huge rooms with people counting them. Even myself, 
I even did actual physical counting just to help the process move along. Anyways, the ballots were all counted, kept in their rooms, and every single person was left in that building until every ballot was counted and the polls closed. Because we didn't even want someone saying, you know what, it looks like John Kerry was running away with things. We didn't want that running, running out and telling it to people. Just anything like that. So, yes, everyone was kept there with no way to communicate to the outside. There was no computer access, no cell phones or anything like that. If someone tapped a message on, the, on, on a window somewhere with Morse code, then maybe that happened. That's about the only thing I could think of that could be communicated to the outside. The building had personal security there. Every, every door was monitored by surveillance. It was as secure as operation as could be. So... Thinking that people would have just like, you know, brought in any sort of ballots just at some point, just like someone just walked in and was just like, I'm just going to, you know, put this box of ballots down. You guys can count this next. Like that happening, I could tell you was impossible, impossible. And if it did happen, like I said, there would be an immediate glaring number that would stick out right away. Because like I said, I had to report every single day the number of ballots that came back in and the number of ballot requests that came in. If there was a large disparity between any of those numbers, it would be caught immediately. And sure enough, the count came in, I do believe it was within 5% because you know, some people like, like some people pass away before they get to vote or some people just don't get around to vote or they went out to vote in person. It was within around 5%. So everything looked fine. There was no fraud to be found in New Mexico. All right. So bringing that to today and this was back, you know, in, in the John Kerry election. So to think that there would be less stringent oversight that even just physical monitoring from cameras would be less stringent is just it's mind-blowing because people are making it look like now that like um yo sam bring some more ballot boxes in um you know the ones with the with the with the biden hole circled yeah bring those in i'll tell you what you know what bring in 180,000 of those ballots because we're going to put them in the system all at once. Like this whole thing with um, uh, Michigan saying how, oh, 160,000 ballots magically came in for Biden and zero for Trump. Like, is that seriously what you think? Like, I, I, I don't know what's behind that disparity. Or I think they said it was just some like logistical error in the computer system where it clogged up the information and then it released all at once. It wasn't that everything was stopped and then scanned 108,000 ballots and they all went to Biden. Like to think that the Democrats behind this or whoever was behind this fraud said, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop scanning all the ballots and we're going to scan 180,000 just for Biden. Because that won't look obvious at all. We're that stupid. Like, no, you're that stupid if you believe that's what happened. Again, a fraud can be found, and I guarantee they're going to look into all of this because I believe the oversight is such and is so stringent that it is so hard to just bring in ballots because that's what people think is happening. People honestly believe that people are just bringing in ballots, which, How? Every ballot is allocated to an individual that they have to sign off on, that they have to be alive. Well, well, technically someone could have died, could have filled out their ballot and then died. So technically, Arch, someone could have died. Okay, there, you got me. So maybe 10 to 20 people, like a state like Pennsylvania, might have died after they sent their ballot in. Okay, anyways, that formality aside, the amount of oversight is so just... Why should you believe me, though? Your guy lost, so there has to be fraud. Right, Trumpsters? Oh, don't worry. Once things are examined and no fraud is found, and even, even if this very Republican Supreme Court agrees that, no, the numbers look legit, what do you want us to do? It looks like just a ton more people voted for Biden via a mail-in ballot because they were more safe conscious 
and just didn't want to take one more chance with the whole coronavirus thing. Whereas Trumpsters are Mr. Mr. and Mrs. I don't want to wear a mask. I'm going to go out and vote. You can't stop me from voting. Blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, it's very believable that Biden voters voted in mass much more via a mail-in ballot. It makes complete sense. So once that whole disparity gets pushed aside and the courts see that, like, no, it just, it just looks like you lost, Trump. It's then going to turn into, well, oh, well, um, you no, know, you see the, there's, 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 there's mail personnel and, you know, when they're in a rich neighborhood and they see a ballot in the box, they just, they just rip that up. They just rip it up because they're like, you know, it's an upscale white suburban household. So they probably voted for Trump. So we just going to take our chances and rip that ballot up. Yeah, okay. Is that possible that that happened? Sure, it's possible that happened. Is it possible that that happened hundreds of thousands of times and that there isn't remains of hundreds of thousands of ballots found anywhere that are ripped up? Is that possible? No, that's about slim to none. Anyways, keep the excuses coming. And I, I love, as much as I don't like Joe Biden as president... I'm loving this meltdown from the Trumpsters. Holy shit. You guys, you guys, as much as you celebrated beating Hillary, oh, are you sore losers? Keep it up. That is all.